drummer.
Good morning and welcome. My name is Christine De Dennis. As Associate Professor of Chemistry and the Presiding Officer of the Faculty, it is my pleasure to act as Faculty Marshal for today's commencement. Although we do not anticipate needing to do so, in the event of bad weather, please remain where you are and I will share with you the details of where you need to move. We begin this ceremony by acknowledging that we are on the traditional territory of the Onondaga, or the people of the Great Hill. In English, they are known as the Seneca people, the keepers of the Western Door. They are one of the six nations of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the world's oldest participatory democracy. Please remain standing for the director of the Abbey Center after, because I already messed this up, I think. <laughs> Did I mess this up? Okay, give me one second. I just need my script. Please remain standing for the director of the Abbey Center for Jewish Life and the Hillel advisor, Julianne Miller. Hours ago, a hint of light broke through the darkness, reflecting over the lake. A moment of in-between, the closing of night and the opening of day, an end and a beginning. And yet is the end really the end? When the night disappears into day, the stars and the moon are always there, if not always visible. As there is a cycle of dawn and dusk, night and day, over and over and over again, the moon sometimes visible at night and sometimes during the day, so too your life will have ends and beginnings, often so intertwined that it's hard to tell if something is ending or beginning or both. So as we step into this liminal moment, looking backward and looking forward, let us do so with open minds and open hearts, grateful for that which has been and that which will be and all that we will carry with us into the beauty of the world we continue to create together. Please be seated. Anna Lenti, the director of the College's Corral, will now lead, a, lead graduating senior members of the College's Corral, assisted by other Corral members, in a performance of The Road Home by Stephen Paulus.
To preside over today's commencement, please welcome the president of Hobart and William Smith Colleges, Joyce P. Jacobson. <laughs> On behalf of the trustees, faculty, and staff, good morning, and welcome to the 197th commencement of Hobart College and the 111th commencement of William Smith College. Thank you for being with us during this bicentennial year to celebrate the remarkable classes of 2022 and the culmination of their achievements at Hobart and William Smith. We are honored to have many esteemed members of the Board of Trustees with us, as well as three of our honorary degree recipients, who I will recognize momentarily. Allow me to welcome in a special way the families of our graduates. Today, as we celebrate the educational accomplishments of these talented students, we recognize that for every one of us, our very first teacher was a parent or family member. As much as the colleges have given your child the tools to lead a life of consequence, so too has your child changed the colleges forever in ways that are consequential. We are proud of the difference they have made here and grateful to you for entrusting your child to us. Provost Sarah Kirk and President Joyce P. Jacobson will now present, in the name of the Board of Trustees, the candidates for honorary degrees. It is my honor and pleasure to recognize this year's honorary degree recipients. In awarding these degrees, the Board of Trustees affirms the values that stand at the core of these colleges artistic exploration, leadership and integrity, bravery in the fight for freedom, and a commitment to the well-being of all human beings. By selecting distinguished individuals of demonstrated merit and accomplishment to be recognized by the conferring of honorary degrees, the Board of Trustees, through its honor committee, invites them into special relationship with, the, with our colleges. These awards carry the full weight of the history, traditions, and ideals of Hobart and William Smith. They are given with care and respect and with honest affection for those whose lives and deeds we are privileged to honor. I now present Eric Anderson from the class of 1965, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Eric Anderson, since leaving the shores of Seneca Lake in 1963, you have lived the life of an artist, dedicated to the creation of music and to perfecting your craft. Along that journey, you have become a trailblazer and entrepreneur, establishing folk music as a preeminent art form, and then transcending that label to create a body of work that has inspired and influenced generations of songwriters and performers. Your songs have been recorded and performed by Judy Collins, Johnny Cash, The Grateful Dead, Pete Seeger, and many, many others who admire and commend you. But it is the quality of your work that truly distinguishes you. In your songs, you uncover the deepest and most complex of human emotions and experiences, capturing in lyrics and arrangements the immeasurable and the ineffable. Eric Anderson, for your ever-evolving and influential career, for your commitment to your craft that uncovers the human condition, and for the example that you set to our students of a life of consequence, we honor you today. I now present Alice Ann Wilbur as a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Alice Ann 
Wilbur, whether coaching a championship game and making quicksilver strategy decisions that lead to wins, putting in the hard work to bring out the best in your student athletes, acting as a mentor to your colleagues and to generations of alumni who continue to call you coach, or volunteering in our community to make this place by the side of Seneca Lake the very best it can be, you set a remarkable example. You have earned more wins than any other coach in NCAA Division III women's soccer, including two national championships. You have been named, oh, let's clap, let's clap. <laughs> You have been named Coach of the Year five times by the United Soccer Coaches, making you one of only three coaches and the only woman to do so. Alison Wilbur, for your mentorship of the students who have been so lucky to call you coach, your commitment to always being better, a better coach, a better leader, a better person, for your dedication to the life of the mind and the body and how the two interconnect, and perhaps most especially for your kindness, humility, and unrivaled integrity. It is my privilege to award you this honorary degree today. I now present in absentia President Zelensky as a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Today, Hobart and William Smith join colleges and universities across the United States in awarding an honorary degree to Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. On February 24th, nearly three months ago to the day, Russia invaded Ukraine. In the face of an invading nation with more resources, more person power, more tanks, more missiles, and more experience in warfare, President Zelensky has held his ground, remaining in Kiev to lead the defense of his country. In rallying the world in support of Ukraine and its people, President Zelensky has made it clear that the struggle for freedom and democracy is a shared exercise, one that is participatory and that requires our constant diligence. And so, for his remarkable bravery and leadership in the face of an unprovoked and unjust invasion, for the example he sets to us all that we must remain ever vigilant in the defense of civil liberties and a free society, and in recognition of the fortitude of the Ukrainian people, both in Ukraine and here in upstate New York, we honor President Volodymyr Zelensky today. I now present Dr. Christopher C. Byrer from the Hobart class of 1981 as a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Science. Dr. Christopher Byer, it is an honor to have you with us today. Born in Switzerland while your father was a medical student, you attended Hobart, also your father's alma mater, to study history. After graduation, you traveled to Asia where you studied Buddhism that experience influenced you in profound ways, making you a lifelong practitioner of Buddhism and a person dedicated to the practice of compassion. You returned to the United States to attend medical school, and as a young gay man living in New York City in the 1980s, you witnessed the gravity of the AIDS epidemic firsthand. You watched friends and loved ones die, including your own partner. Little was understood about the disease, treatment was ineffective. Your response was to build a career as a relentless public health advocate, working on HIV AIDS prevention at the interfaces of public health and human rights, medicine and politics, gender and sexuality. You have become the global expert on the topic. Dr. Christopher Beyer, through a lifetime dedicated to the practice of compassion, you have formed alliances with the leaders of nations and movements, and in so doing, have built a global compassion for the suffering of others. So in this bicentennial year, as we celebrate the 200th anniversary of Hobart College, we celebrate you, the family legacy you have at your alma mater, and your work to reduce suffering. And it is therefore my great honor, Dr. Chris Beyer, 
This degree bestowing on you, Doctor of Science, honoris causa, together with all privileges and obligations therefore pertaining. Well, congratulations to each and every one of you, the class of 2022. Yeah. You have earned your degrees in a remarkable once-in-a-century period. Learning through the pandemic years of 2020, 2021, and 2022. So I'd like to start by asking all of the others of us here, your family, your friends, your partners, the faculty, administration, and staff of these colleges to celebrate your resilience. You survived, you thrived, you've taken care of each other, and you've taken care of yourselves. Well done, truly well done. I'm an epidemiologist, and as you've heard, my work has been in infectious diseases. Until recently, kind of a niche field. <laughs> but that, of course, has all changed. Epidemiology comes from the Greek, epidemos, for upon the people. It's been described as compassion at a distance, since we study not the individual person, but communities, populations. And when we have a great global pandemic, our entire human species as a whole. Today, I want to speak to you about some of the lessons we've learned from this extraordinary time that we've all lived through together, and to think together about the tasks you will face, the roles you may come to play as you leave this marvelous place. But before I do, I'd like to start with some gratitude. Nice to have dogs here, huh? <laughs> First, I want to thank President Jacobson for the honor of being asked to speak to you all today uh, and for the honorary degree, which means so much to me. Not just because I loved my time at these colleges, but also because of the great legacy of Elizabeth Blackwell, the first woman doctor in the modern era, who studied here when it was the Geneva Medical College. A remarkable and still fascinating woman who pioneered ideas of hygiene during the Civil War that still inform medicine and public health practice. And just give you one example. Anybody been using hand sanitizer lately? <laughs> That's part of Elizabeth Blackwell's legacy. I'd like to thank my dad, Dr. Charles Byrer, Hobart class of 1956. <laughs> He met our mother, the extraordinary Nancy Byer, Cuca College, class of 1955, while at Hobart. And for that, our family is eternally grateful. I can't step on this campus and not think about the amazing professors who helped shape my thinking and the many endeavors that marked the time I spent here and with my wonderful lifelong friends, many of whom are here today. Suzanne McNally was my advisor in history. She later went on to become the dean of William Smith. Marvin Bram was our guide for all things prehistory, which remains ever more relevant today as genetics, paleogenetics, uncover more and more of our human origin story and prove Marvin to have been remarkably prescient. Doc Heaton managed to get us religious studies credit to start an organic farm on five acres along the Seneca, where we actually grew crops also farmed by the Seneca, the indigenous people here. And that land was loaned to us by Geneva farmer Robbie Poole. That became the farm club and then the farm house. I gather the farmhouse is no more, but that legacy lasted a couple of decades. And I just want to share with you one Suzanne McNally anecdote to give you a sense of her remarkable caring and concern as an advisor. So 1979, which was two years into our time here, was the 10th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. That is the beginning of the modern movement for LGBTQ rights. We decided to form the Hobart and William Smith Gay and Lesbian Alliance. Sounds very grand. Actually, there was one gay man, that was me, and one lesbian, who <laughs> was Ellen Gutmaker, a wonderful William Smith student. Uh, and that alliance 
uh, was formed also so that we could get on the bus with the students from Cornell and go and march in the first March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights in 1979. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> So when we formed that alliance, we decided, you know, this of course, it's hard to imagine, but it was before the internet, it was before mobile phones, right? If you wanted to announce something, you put an ad in the Finger Lakes Times. So, <laughs> so we did that. And this was the era of landlines. So uh, we put my apartment phone number uh, as the number to call. And the morning that paper appeared, the first person who called was Suzanne McNally calling to just say, I hope you're okay, and offering her support. And for that, I really have eternal gratitude. Now, about those lessons, uh, some of which we've learned and some of which, unfortunately, are going to be up to you all uh, to learn and implement. So my work has dealt with two pandemics, HIV AIDS and COVID-19. And when COVID-19 hit, I joined the COVID Vaccine Prevention Network to work on the COVID vaccine trials. Uh, this, of course, was funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health, so it was funded by the taxpayers. And for those of you who pay U.S. taxes, thank you. <laughs> it made a big difference. Uh, there are many facets to the U.S. response, uh, and doubtless we will be studying these for decades. One is certainly the magnificent scientific achievement of the COVID-19 vaccine effort. A courageous Chinese scientist uh, against government constraints published the sequence of that virus online in January of 2020, and we had candidate vaccine candidates made within three weeks. That is an unbelievable achievement. The vaccine candidates were ready uh, to go into human trials, early human trials, in the early spring of 2020, and then the NIH announced that we were going to have to do five safety and efficacy trials with 30,000 volunteers each. We're going to need 150,000 people to step up and participate in these vaccine trials. And the American people just absolutely responded. We were able to enroll all of those trials starting in July of 2020. And of course, uh, all five were completed in extraordinarily rigorous, ethical, scientific uh, standards. Uh, and. Uh, these trials delivered in an unbelievable way. Right? And the vaccines have delivered despite the speed with which this virus is evolving and continues to evolve. And by the way, for those of you who think that evolution is still an unproven theory, uh, <laughs> let me just say, we have all been living through all the proof we need that Charles Darwin's great imaginative insight was fundamentally correct. His only error was in thinking that evolution moved at glacially slow paces. And as we've seen, sometimes it can be incredibly fast. But there are other aspects of the response that are more challenging, and these we really have to pay attention to. First, the stark inequalities in healthcare access and the many inequities in our societies that COVID-19 so rapidly exploited and uncovered. We witness the terrible power of what are called the social determinants of health, poverty, lack of scientific literacy, social marginalization. And we watch these factors drive up case rates and lead to higher losses of life in minority communities, among the working poor, those essential workers who couldn't work from home, among the undocumented. We soon saw something else as well, and this is really what I want us all to think about together this morning. Disinformation, the deliberate spreading of falsehoods, and misinformation, the unwitting but still enormously damaging further spread of those untruths, have turned out to be literally lethal threats. Disinformation led millions of Americans to believe falsehoods, choose unproven and in several cases dangerous therapies over clinically tested and effective ones and led millions to refuse vaccination with some of the safest and most potent vaccines we've ever had. And this is not just in the realm of science or health or medicine. The political manipulation of falsehoods, including the big lie of the stolen election of 2020, have emerged as some of the most serious threats facing our democracy, and these are threats for your generation uh, ahead. And these threats are transnational. They're happening globally. 
So we just heard that wonderful celebration of Vladimir Zelensky, an absolutely extraordinary leader. But take the false narrative that Russian leader Putin has put forward to justify the invasion of Ukraine. His supposed mission is to denazify Ukraine. Who destroyed the city of Mariupol, relentlessly shelled by Russian forces? The Ukrainians destroyed it. That's the Russian narrative, right? That is a Shakespearean inversion of the truth, of the evidence, of reality itself. And because totalitarian regimes like Putin's crush independent media and silence critical voices of dissent, too many Russians either believe these falsehoods or are too afraid to challenge them. And that is why dealing with disinformation and misinformation, unpacking false narratives, and recognizing the politicization of evidence are already a singular challenge for your generation. Critical thinking is going to matter more than ever. Your education matters more than ever. Here's another example. The ability to look behind the denials of climate change and see the fossil fuel industry and those they paid to represent their interests is essential if we're going to preserve our futures, if you're going to preserve all of your futures and the lives of all the other precious species with which we share this breathtakingly beautiful and irreplaceable planet. Upholding facts against falsehoods is more than a responsibility we share as citizens of this self-governing republic. It is a right. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, which Eleanor Roosevelt, one of the two leaders of the U.S. delegation, along with W.E.B. Du Bois, the great African-American scholar, Eleanor called it a Magna Carta for all mankind. If you haven't read it, please do. But one of the less appreciated rights is the right to benefit from the fruits of science. This right was stipulated in the Universal Declaration because during World War II, so many people were subject to human experimentation from which there was no chance they or their families would benefit. But this has since been understood as a shared right that we all have by virtue of being human, the right to benefit from scientific advances. And that includes new data, evidence, findings, facts. It also includes the integrity of the scientific process itself, since we're always learning, always refining and expanding knowledge, and we have to be open to abandoning old orthodoxies when new evidence shows them to be incorrect, incomplete, or obscuring the way forward. This is why the independence of thought, freedom to think and work without undue politicization is so fundamental to advancing evidence and the systems, the integrity of those processes matter as much or more than the content. You have a right to the truth as it evolves, and that right now has to be vigorously defended. We've been watching history unfold in real time and also watching the attempts to rewrite this living history as it unfolds. As you go forward from this marvelous place with your achievements in hand, and you take your turns at making history, it will be essential to protect the truth, to protect integrity for yourself and for others, to use your critical thinking to unpack those false narratives. Democracy can't thrive in a, a post-truth world. Neither can nature, and neither can we. So let me close by saying, please, use your education. Use the critical thinking you've developed here. Don't be fooled. Don't be had. Unpack those false narratives in whatever field of endeavor you choose. And yes, as the saying goes, speak truth to power and defend that truth. It's your responsibility and it's your right. Thank you for your attention and congratulations again on your wonderful achievements today.
Craig Stein, the Chair of the Board of Trustees, will now announce the Touching the Future Awards. Thank you, President Jacobson. Good morning to everyone. Congratulations to the graduates and your family and friends. The Touching the Future Award takes its name from the words of Krista McAuliffe, the first teacher selected to participate in the space shuttle program and who sadly died in the space shuttle Challenger explosion. McAuliffe expressed the sentiments of many teachers when she said, I touch the future, I teach. In 2004, the Board of Trustees established the Touching the Future Award to honor educators from elementary, middle, and high school who have had impact on our students. From the essays that were submitted by our seniors, two have been selected. Tammy Borland, the New Visions Medical Program Instructor at St. Peter's Health Partners and Samaritan Hospital in West Sand Lake, New York, was nominated by Madison Heisbrook. Dr. Parvin Torres, Director of Curriculum at Worcester School in Danbury, Connecticut, was nominated by Thomas G. Shea. Tammy Borland and Parvin Torres are recognized today for their important work as educators, mentors, and leaders, and for embodying the mission of the colleges in leading lives of consequence. Hobart and William Smith proudly present you with the 2022 Touching the Future Award. Seniors Mary Mazzarella and Caleb Austin have been chosen to offer the reflections on this important moment in their lives. May I introduce Mary and Caleb. It is a great honor to address and celebrate this special milestone with you. Inescapably, our thoughts wander, recalling our time spent here and anticipating what awaits next. As we think about both our past and future, let's not forget the present right now. As an avid photographer, many of you have seen me about campus capturing moments, moments like a beautiful sunrise on the lake, a shot on goal with ice flying, a receiver seemingly defying gravity, and, receive, and on occasion being on the receiving end of an errant basketball to my face and almost being steamrolled by the next Ali Marpet, all in an attempt to not break Kevin Colton's lens. But it is capturing the fleeting moment that we often see truths, beauty, and realities that would otherwise go unnoticed. So. Let's indulge ourselves and take a mental snapshot of right now. Sense the grandeur of the moment. Feel the satisfaction of achievement. Notice the joy, pride, and great expectation. Simply be present. We have learned much here that we carry with us as we journey forward. We have been exposed to a rich knowledge scape of diverse ideas. We have been nurtured to be inquisitive, critical thinkers, and encouraged to be seekers of truth about not just the world, but about ourselves. Who am I? What do I choose to be and why? How are others impacted? These ever-present questions form the lens through which we must see ourselves if we are to lead lives of consequence. The environment at HWS has been a safe place to grow emotionally, socially, and intellectually so that we can live such lives and become a part of something bigger than ourselves. The challenges of our generation are great. We live in a world increasingly steeped in danger, marred by pandemics, war, climate change and social unrest. The picture looks bleak. Despite this, or perhaps because of this, there is no greater opportunity to do things that are meaningful. There is so much for us to give if we don't choose to turn off our cameras and look away. Breakthroughs come forth and are around every corner. 
Each of us has the capacity to partake, some as voices of conscience, advocates, and makers and judges of law, others as social workers, business leaders, and artists. The list is endless. The portrait of our class of 2022 is yet to come into focus, but a beautifully unique composition will develop in time as we are exposed to the world. Ours will join a 200-year family album of those who have already made a difference. It is our turn to contribute to the great human endeavor, seeking truth and the betterment of our world for ourselves and the generations that follow. Now, take a look from a different perspective and ask yourself, how many people have helped you to be here where you are today? We are the heirs of countless acts of love and kindness, some given by bystanders, others given by steady fixtures in our lives. Free the given because they believe our lives mean something. That within us is a capacity to leave consequential lives. Later, take time to thank those who have come to be here with you and those who aren't here but have helped you along your way. As we depart from our home on the lake and Cox Hall recedes into the distance, perhaps for the last time, take a moment to remember that we lived, learned, and laughed together. Take a mental picture of it all and carry it with you. Focus on who you aspire to be and pursue truth using the skills we have learned here. Remember, every moment is a snapshot of who you are in act and deed. You alone choose your life's composition, your picture, and what others will see in you. Good luck to the class of 2022. Go do great things for the world. Thank you. We have been through a revolutionary four years. In normal times, I imagine commencement would be a deeply emotional reflection on all the experiences we had together and the first step into the daunting unknown of our future, our first step into the real world, our first step into our long adult lives, the chasm that rests just beyond this very commencement. We are now sitting at that threshold. For us, though, for our bicentennial class, we have been through so much. And so we not only face the usual heartbreak of our predecessors, but the baggage of a truly unique four years. We were sent home in our sophomore year, just as many of us began growing familiar to this campus, just as many of us started making our deepest friendships, and for some, we had our first real experiences with love. It is when we could just begin calling this place home that we are uprooted and disconnected from everyone and everything we held dear. And during that long, hot, lonely summer, many of us participated in the largest protests in our millennium, and we entered into one of the most contentious, frightening, and consequential presidential elections in our nation's history, with ramifications not just for us, but for the world. And while all this was going on, so many of us dealt with the unspeakable effects of personal loss. Whether it's the loss of family and friends to a global pandemic, to radical political differences, or to the depths of isolation, we all had a unique personal struggle to get here today. I recall sitting alone amid the height of the pandemic when we all struggled to find something to occupy our minds. I stumbled across the Tur Turkish poet, Nazim Hikmet, he knew about isolation and hardship more than most. He was imprisoned by his country, a land he loved with all his heart. Then he was exiled to faraway lands to die alone without ever seeing it again. He understood the extreme loss, longing, and desperation we all felt so prominently these last two years. And yet he always found a way to cherish the love and memories of his home. And he never forgot to imagine a better and more hopeful future. When we were in the depths of some of the darkest moments in modern American history, I held on to these words of his and the hope they promised. The best sea has yet to be crossed, 
the best child is yet to be born, our best days have yet to be lived, and the best word I want to say to you is the word I have not yet said. As we leave the days of COVID and isolation behind us, and we've already begun readjusting to a remarkably different world, Nazim Hikmet was right. There is always a better future ahead of us, so long as we merely remember to imagine one. And as we now leave this place behind us, things might appear scary. I, for one, am terrified of the uncertainty that lies ahead. And the question of where will I go next consumes more and more of my every day. As we go out into the world, we need to remember our potential, and we need to always remember to imagine a better future ahead. We must never forget to hope. Our experiences as the class of 2022 will forever be chiseled into the marble halls of history. Our generation will define centuries to come from, our, from the experiences we've had over the last four years, from the experiences of a truly unique moment in modern history. It is our experiences that will pave the way for future generations just as much as, if not more than, our education normally would. And as we depart here today, and we say our last goodbyes, carry these words of Nazim Hikmet with you. We open doors, close doors, pass through doors, and reach at the end of our only journey, no city, no harbor. The train derails, the ship sinks, the plane crashes, the map is drawn on ice. But if I could begin this journey all over again, I would. Thank you. Provost Sarah Kirk will now present the candidates for the College Experience Certificate, the Master of Arts in Teaching, and the Master of Science in Management, and the President will confer the certificate and those degrees. I have the honor, President Jacobson, to present the candidate for the College Experience Certificate. The candidate has completed the requirements accepted by the colleges for that certificate. By the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the College Experience Certificate of Hobart and William Smith Colleges and admit you to the community of its graduates with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching at Hobart and William Smith Colleges please rise and remain standing. I have the honor, President Jacobson, to present the degree of Masters of Arts in Teaching the candidates now standing before you who have completed the requirements accepted by the faculty for that degree. By the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Teaching of Hobart and William Smith Colleges and admit you to the community of its graduates with all the rights and privileges therefore pertaining. Will the inaugural candidates for the degree of Masters of Science and Management at Hobart and William Smith Colleges please rise and remain standing. I have the honor, President Jacobson, to present the degree of Masters of Science and Management those students standing before you who have completed the requirements accepted by the faculty for that degree. By the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree Master of Science and Management of Hobart and William Smith Colleges and admit you to the community of its graduates with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining.
the Dean of Howard College, Scott Brophy, and the Dean of William Smith College, Lisa Kenzig, will now present candidates for degrees, and the pres president will confer those degrees. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science please rise and remain standing. I have the honor, President Jacobson, to present for the degree Bachelor of Science with honors and praises to be mentioned, the candidates now standing before you who have completed the requirements accepted by the faculty for that degree. By the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science of Hobart and William Smith Colleges and admit you to the community of its graduates with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts please rise and remain standing. I have the honor, President Jacobson, to present for the degree Bachelor of Arts with honors and praises to be mentioned, the candidates now standing before you who have completed the requirements accepted by the faculty for that degree. By the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts of Hobart and William Smith Colleges and admit you to the community of its graduates with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. President Jacobson, the Hobart and William Smith student for the College Experience Certificate will now be granted his diploma. Cooper Holcomb. Cooper will be receiving his diploma at a later time. President Jacobson, the Hobart and William Smith students for the Master of Arts in Teaching will now come forward to receive their diplomas. Daphna Bendel. <laughs> Stephen Elijah D'Alterio in absentia. <laughs> Bailey DeSanto. Emma Spearing Hardy. Claire Sita Joshi. Emma Catherine Kelly.
Sarah Elizabeth LaFrera. Alexandra Leah Lowe. Catherine Lynn Perkoski. Alexis Corinne Reciapa. President Jacobson, the Hobart and William Smith students for the Master of Science in Management will now come forward to receive their diplomas. Ryan Archer in absentia. Isaiah Shaheem Boone. Dylan Thomas Carey. Justin Dude in absentia. Maxwell William Harris. Jackson Whitney Lashore. Brittany Mead in absentia. Eves F. Montesal. Aiden C. Morgan in absentia. Thomas Edward Mott in absentia. Anna Elizabeth Murray. Daniel Emmett Ryan in absentia. Philip E. Satin in absentia. Wiley Garrett Sherman. <laughs> President Jacobson. The candidates for bachelor degree will now come forward to receive their diplomas. Amanda Marie Alto. Mohammed Hassan Abdul Hafez. <laughs> Phineas Patrick Adams. <laughs> Samuel Abraham Adcock, cum laude with honors in architectural studies. <laughs> Ryan Alexander Aguilar. Arub Ahmad in absentia. Christopher Thomas Aitken. Karina Alexander. Daniel Alexander. Tebian Ali. Elizabeth Alperin. Stephen John Alphys. Jack Irwin Amsterdam. Michael Anthony Ansaldo. Jackson Arenberg, magna cum laude. Yeah. 
Jamie Lionel alias Kwanga. Cum laude. Ashton Blake Ariola Summa Cum laude. Lily Dylan Armstrong. Sage Rose Arsenault Magna Cum Laude. Juniper Moon Asaro Niederlitz Summa Cum Laude with honors in philosophy. Ruby Marie Amon Magna Cum Laude in absentia. Our graduation speaker, Caleb Martin Austin, summa cum laude. Heidi Aversa, cum laude. Olivia Catherine Bodicher, magna cum laude. Aisha Ba, cum laude in absentia. Megan McConnell Bailey. Michael Abwaje Bama. Douglas Robert Barnum. Mackenzie Lennon Burl Summa Cum Laude. Nicholas William Bashta. Amanda Baum Cum Laude. Pearson Clark Beattie. <laughs> Susanna Becchio. James Edward Beeler. Ava Elizabeth Belcor. Chase William Bell with honors in geoscience. Julia Roxanne Bellamy Summa Cum Laude with honors in physics. Keelan Bellrose Westfall. Mark O'Brien Benamorito. Bryce Harrington Benham. Zachary William Burzon. Keandre Jelen Bataudier. Crocefiso Peleno Bianchi. Autumn Regina Bierce, magna cum laude. Emma Elizabeth Bilton, magna cum laude. Hannah Rose Bilton. Quentin Birch, Jr. Freya May Burkus Dent, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jayla Renee Blackman. <laughs> Kara Grace Blair. <laughs> Noah Samuel Block. Zoe L. Bloomfield, cum laude, with honors in studio art. <laughs> Alessandra Serafine Bonagora, magna cum laude. William Deneres Benelli, in absentia. Margaret Cayul Bonamo, summa cum laude. 
Colleen Joan Boucher, summa cum laude with honors in mathematics. Emma Elizabeth Bauman, summa cum laude. Caitlin Ruth Chantal Brathwaite, magna cum laude with honors in writing and rhetoric. Ava Catherine Brennan. Rodney Ray Brent, Jr. Alexandra Davison Brend, summa cum laude with honors in psychological science. Catherine Joy Britt, magna cum laude. Andrew Frank Broering, magna cum laude with honors in religious studies. Matthew Thomas Bruno, cum laude. Gavin Jarrett Buddha. Madeline Julia Burns, magna cum laude. Bryn Elizabeth Bushy. Leilane Buswinka. Christopher Calero. Olympia Victoria Canales Cum Laude. Brian Philippe Canis. Michael Canino. John Joseph Caniff. Elizabeth Kate Cannon. Anthony Corella. Alyssa Marie Carnicelli. Charles Daniel Caraway, cum laude in absentia. Gemma Elizabeth Carlock. Leisha Castillo. Emmanuel Raul Castillo Gonzalez. Elizabeth Francesca Castro. Nia Marie Cathcart. Meredith Emily Cavert. Bo Shu Chen in absentia. Deng Chen, cum laude. Caitlin Brooke Chichora, cum laude. Michael James Christensen. Demosthenes Chrysuchu. <laughs> Summa cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Chop, magna cum laude. Molly Ellen Clements, cum laude. Robert Eaton Coakley, cum laude. Catherine Elizabeth Cody, magna cum laude. Blake Douglas Coffey. Rosemary Colon Martinez. <laughs> Alexander.
Alexandra Brooke Conlon Magna Cum Laude. Christopher John Costello, Summa Cum Laude, with honors in English. Michael, sorry, Mitchell Patrick Cottam Cum Laude. Ryan Patrick Cottam Magna Cum Laude. Connor Cowie Cum Laude. Caitlin Sierra Crabtree Cum Laude with honors in physics. Taylor Marie Crosby, magna cum laude. Annie Wheeler Crotty, cum laude. Lindsay Woods Crowell, cum laude. Bellamy Grace Crozier. Samuel Garrison Cutterback. <laughs> Emily Ann Cumming. <laughs> Kean James Dart Snufer. <laughs> Chloe Ella Davidson, Magna Cum Laude. Olivia Lynn Davidson, cum laude with honors in studio art. Noelle Elizabeth DeBurn. Landon Christopher DeCesare Fuset. Andrea Delgado, magna cum laude. Lucas de Medeiros in absentia. Dylan Robert Denault, summa cum laude. Andrea L. Derushi, summa cum laude. Molly Sophia Dexter, summa cum laude with honors in the individual major. Bernie William Diaz. Ryan Dixon, magna cum laude. Hayden Jervis Dieterle, cum laude. Robert James De Gregorio. Yishu Ding in absentia. Madison Elizabeth Doan. <laughs> Zoe Ruth Dardy, cum laude. <laughs> Aiden Patrick Donahue. <laughs> Gliss Theatam Doni, cum laude. David Walter Donker in absentia. Elise Margaret Donovan, cum laude. <laughs> Trevor Patrick Dow, cum laude. <laughs> Garrett John Downs. <laughs> Kyle Robert Driscoll. Mark David Driscoll. Yeah, Mark. Emma Duffy. Andrew Thomas Eckert. Taylor Marie Etor. Blake Andrew Evans. Salim Fabio.
William Wallace Fallon. Stuart Englert, Englert Falso. Kenza Brooks Farid. Liam Michael Farrell. Grace Faulkner Summa Kumwade. Allison M. Fader. Owen Thomas Fider Sullivan. Ren Parko Ferris. Patrick Robert Fitzgerald, cum laude. Talia Fleischman. Delary Dana Flood. Ellen Amelia Flynn, cum laude. Isabel Foise, summa cum laude. Samantha Mary Falk. Talia Fountain, cum laude. Ani Friedman, summa cum laude with honors in writing and rhetoric. Casey Lee French, summa cum laude. Matthew Thomas Friedkin, cum laude. <laughs> Thomas Cade Frucci, cum laude. <laughs> Ning Yu Fu, in absentia. William Richard Fuller. Brenna Catherine Gage, summa cum laude. <laughs> Maria Gansi, cum laude. <laughs> Catalina Augustina Garcia Tomas. <laughs> Peter Hopkins Gaudet, magna cum laude. Robert Charles Gibson. <laughs> Carolyn Grace Gerard, summa cum laude. <laughs> Camila Lucia Goklowski, magna cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Catherine Goichman. Natalie Therese Gold, magna cum laude, in absentia. Sasha Blythe Crowther Goldsmith. Henry Alexander Gomez, in absentia. Margo Grace Grabshi, summa cum laude. Sarah Dunlop Gray, cum laude. Cassidy Gregory. Jacob T. Gresh. Michael Anthony Greco Jr., magna cum laude. Bryce Mauricio Griffin in absentia. Zachary Gross. Andrew Lee Guadia. Michaela Claire Goulis, summa cum laude in absentia. 
Yuming Guo. Julian Stewart Leonard German. Blake Andrew Guzzi. Matthew Christian Habersat Magna Cum Laude. Henry Damon Hall. Joseph Dan Halstrom, Magna Cum Laude. Mary Hanrahan, Summa Cum Laude. Dway Harris. Jackson Joseph Mark Harris, Summa Cum Laude. Madison Catherine Hasbrook, Summa Cum Laude. Caitlin Burns Hat, Cum Laude. James Weldon Hauser. Coleman Crerand Hay, Cum Laude. Robert Hazelton Jr. David Michael Haggerty. Sarah Louise Helms, cum laude. Gabrielle Corinne Henry, cum laude. Corey Joseph Heron. Lydia Reed Herder, cum laude in absentia. Alexander Peter Hesketh. Rajan Kushner. Grant Thomas Presswick Heyman, cum laude. Faith Haven Hicks. Aaron Miles Hitman. Casey Hayes Hochmeyer. Gretchen Louise Hundert Mark, summa cum laude. Evan Joseph Hunt. Rebecca Leah Huss. Gazem Hamad Hussein, cum laude. Thomas Griffin Hutchison. Abby Ignatowski. Frank Imbergia. Marshall Elliot Ireland in absentia. Elizabeth Jacobia. Nathan Scott Jakin. Stella Claire July. Clayton Todd Jamison. Kendall Janik, cum laude. Delilah Jessen, cum laude. Claire Elena Jester, cum laude. Anna Chickling. Ashley Lynn Johnson, summa cum laude. Graham Maddox Johnson. Najim Barry Johnson. Caroline Quigley Jones, Magna Cum Laude. 
Lex Jones. Timothy Robert Jones, cum laude. Alexander Taj Jordan. Peterson Juth. Madison Marin Kenzig de Dennis, summa cum laude. Mohammed Sareen Kareem Cum Laude. Vijay Eugene Carl. Oh. Emily Amanda Keen, Magna Cum Laude. Yeah, David Samuel Keen. Meredith Grace Kehoe, magna cum laude. <laughs> Louise Marie Helen Caress, cum laude. <laughs> Quinn Aaron Kenny, magna cum laude. <laughs> Amanda Marie Kessler, magna cum laude. Ali Dawood Khan. <laughs> William Kim. <laughs> Dalton Leon Kent. <laughs> Dejan King. Marie King. Sean Lee King. Robin Kathleen Kirchgesner, summa cum laude with honors in media and society. <laughs> Catherine Lily Klempen in absentia. Michael Neuer. Yana Knika, magna cum laude. Angelica Linda Knudsen, summa cum laude. Ethan Todd Kornacki. Sawyer F. Coster. Gracie Alexandra Kraft. Anna Krajewski. Claire Katrina Kramer, magna cum laude in absentia. David Cohen Krusen. <laughs> Nicholas Michael Kryak, summa cum laude. Cameron Dean Kumajai. Alex Frank Labella. Sophie May Leno. Felix Carl Eric Lamoureux, magna cum laude. Elena Caroline Harold Lapadula.
Sophie Lepat. Timothy Richard Lapierre, magna cum laude. Liam Michelle. Trevor Thomas Lawrence. Sophia Nicole Lawson. Jared Xavier Leak. John Robert Ledford. Hope Noel Lee Cum Laude. Franz William Rinders in absentia. Zachary G. Lameau. <laughs> Emily Nicole Leonard. <laughs> Abigail Dana Lason. <laughs> Kuichi Lee in absentia. Lillian Ruth Lynn, summa cum laude. Michael John Lindsay. Finley Morgan Link. Roland Aurelius Lipscomb. Justin Lops. Amy Jo Lott, summa cum laude. Christopher Lawrence Lubin. Emma Yost Lucas. William F. Lyons III, summa cum laude. Emma Catherine Maxera. Claire Margaret Rydell Masca. Lily Alexandra Madden, magna cum laude. Tyler David Maddock. Derek Madonna. Aaron McGuyan. Serena Pilar Makdumi. <laughs> Samantha Hope Mancini, magna cum laude. <laughs> Megan Riley Manning, magna cum laude. <laughs> Morris Marchant, magna cum laude. Joshua John Paul Marek, summa cum laude. David Adiadong Mark. Urania Markaki, cum laude. Cecilia Christine Markowski. Dominique Eridis Marshall. Walden Thomas Marshall, summa cum laude. Catherine Marthens. Pierre Anthony Martineau, magna cum laude. Gabriela Martinez Hidalgo, magna cum laude. 
Jafet Martinez Tiros. Emily Rose Martino. Mary Catherine Martino. Caroline Reed Martocci, magna cum laude with honors in economics. Saima Mashori, cum laude. Leah Mateo Medina. Molly Jane Matthews. Chicago Matthews. Mary Renyi Mazzarella. Anna McCarthy. Natalie McCarthy, magna cum laude. Catherine Scott McLearn. J.T. McCoy. Dylan Whitman McDonald in absentia. Colleen Elizabeth McElduff, magna cum laude. Camille Elizabeth McGriff, magna cum laude with honors in writing and rhetoric. Shay Thomas McIntyre, magna cum laude. Maura Patrice McNamara, cum laude. Matthew Lawrence McNulty, magna cum laude. Thomas P. Mead. Emily Wilbur Madeiras. Raja Hamad Mahmood. Cum laude. Ludner Jr. Mercy. James Daniel Meal. Cameron Chase Lawrence Miguel, cum laude. Tori Maletti, magna cum laude. Nicole Elise Miller, summa cum laude. Emily Quinn Mink, magna cum laude. Alice Mitchell. Ashley Mitro, cum laude. Brian Anthony Mitro. Christina Mitro, cum laude. Eric Francisco Molina. Grace Hunter Manjo, magna cum laude with honors in sociology. Madeline Elizabeth Mood, summa cum laude. Caitlin Williams Moody. Molly Driscoll Moore, summa cum laude in absentia. Kelsey Jean Marassi, summa cum laude. Hans Morris. Luisa Moro, cum laude. Maximilian Alexander Moss, cum laude. Eleanor Muckstadt, cum laude. 
Taylor Mensberg. Michael Mark Mulholland. Caitlin May Mullen, cum laude. Patrick Rohan Maloney. Morgan Alessandra Murphy. Emma Nason Nadeau, cum laude. Allison Nethercott, cum laude. Isabel Marca Newman, magna cum laude. Bryce Thomas Noel. Garrett Thomas Noon. Michaela Okanievsky, summa cum laude. Yasmin Monique Oliver. Deirdre Marie O'Malley with honors in classics. Jonathan Rupert O'Neill. Sydney Orlov, cum laude. William Grant Ostring Magna Cum Laude. Chandler Scott Owenby. Joanna Edith Pacheco. Courtney Olivia Page. Raishan Pan in absentia. Olivia Rose Parisi, summa cum laude. Jackson Parka, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kieran Bernard Pasquitz. Justine Elise Pearson, summa cum laude with honors in philosophy. David Raymond Peck, cum laude. Star Josefina Pena. Jekai Peng in absentia. Maydoneri Perez. <laughs> William Dijon Persina, cum laude. Char Charlotte Fitzgerald Peterson, summa cum laude. Teresa Jean Petrusinski, magna cum laude. Elam Campbell Pillay, summa cum laude with honors in English. Emma Grace Pinker. Nicholas Stevens Plants. Taylor Stevens Pluta, magna cum laude with honors in sociology. Bo Winters Powell. Griffin Noel Pugash. Caroline Puste, magna cum laude. Alicia Quarterman, magna cum laude. <laughs> Naomi Esther Radke Rowe. <laughs> Sadia Rachman. <laughs> A 
Anu Rajagopal Kumlaude. Emma Marie Redmond. Blair Elizabeth Riley, magna cum laude with honors in English. Seth Burgess Rankert in absentia. Luke Justice Reynolds. Madison L. Riccardi, summa cum laude. Anna Baird Ryder, cum laude, with honors in environmental studies. Shana Corinne Riggins, summa cum laude. Carly Lidecker Rockstro. Emma McPherson Rogan. Amelia Marie Rojak, summa cum laude. Jessica Michelle Rosales Ramirez. Caroline De La Jose Rose, cum laude. Ilana Danielle Rose, summa cum laude. Jason William Rose. Oliver Lee Schlesinger Rosenthal. <laughs> Benjamin Ward Rudnick. <laughs> Catherine Ann Ruggles, magna cum laude with honors in media and society. Emily Mahilani Runlet, cum laude. Christian E. Ruppenstein. Yes, Robert Anthony Russell, summa cum laude with honors in political science. Jack Russo, cum laude. Joshua Rubin Salazar, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jacob Dylan Sampson, cum laude. Haley Sanchez. Hunter Savignano, magna cum laude. Isaac Ezerat Savona, magna cum laude in absentia. Thomas Hayes Gala. Emma Schaefer, magna cum laude. Haley Elaine Schoenberger, magna cum laude. Sophia Schuler, summa cum laude. Alexander Joseph Sent, magna cum laude. Agnes Daly Shannon. Allison Mary Shaw, cum laude. Joanna Clausenshaw, cum laude. Thomas Gibson Shea the third. <laughs> Mercy Sherman. Shields. Thomas Kijang Chung. Yeah. 
Alex Johann Sickmuller, Magna Cum Laude. Rosemary S.D. Sigloff. Bradley John Simmis. Samuel P. Skinner. Daniel Joseph Sliney. Emmeline Priscilla Chapel Smith. Sarah Ellen Smith, cum laude, in absentia. Okla Bennett Smith II, magna cum laude. Hope Snyder, summa cum laude. Woo! Wyatt Ian Solarte. Samantha Grace Sorensen. Laurel Elizabeth Soulier, magna cum laude. Brooke Lauren Sowerby, magna cum laude. Kyle Anthony Spano cum laude. Aiden Michael Spencer. Julia Faith Spencer, cum laude. Blake Allison Stackpool in absentia. Haley Stakudis, magna cum laude. Henry Norman Starosta. Christina Marie Stein. Lindsay Stelges, magna cum laude. <laughs> Elizabeth A. Stevens, magna cum laude. Benjamin Stigberg. <laughs> Julia Lorraine Stockwin, summa cum laude. Stephanie Elizabeth Stone. Eric Andrew Strait, cum laude. Maya Striuli, magna cum laude. Emma Lee Stewart, in absentia. Mark Anthony Sachuski. Martha Nicole Swanson, magna cum laude. Yay! Hannah Nielsen Sweat, cum laude. Mark Douglas Sennett. Morgan Shipkowski. Lauren Table, cum laude. Fiona Tawney. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Taylor, magna cum laude. Troy Nicholas Tedeschi, cum laude. Cameron Davis Tamoyan in absentia. Jacob Joseph Tome. Yeah. 
Harris David Tarosian, cum laude with honors in writing and rhetoric. Aaron Tushitori in absentia, cum laude. Zachary Thomas Tyson. Isabel Urquiza, summa cum laude. Isabella Valinati. Francis Nolan Von Scheich. Matthew T. Van Hormer. Sophia Varner, cum laude. Jacob Evans Vickers, in absentia, summa cum laude. Gretchen Cozine Vitor, magna cum laude. Cameron Wendell Vona. Marcus Christian Von Wainey. Molly Walker. Zoe Georgia Wagner, summa cum laude. Nishat T. Wahid, cum laude. Kimberly Ann Waldeck, magna cum laude. Lily Grace Walker, cum laude with honors in chemistry. <laughs> Hannah Jane Walsh. Sarah Walter. Garrett Francis Walters. Jia Chi Wong, magna cum laude in absentia. Wyatt Tang Warren. <laughs> Emma Weir, cum laude. <laughs> Annie Kunkel Wertheimer, cum laude. <laughs> Shane Patrick White. Nasir Trayvon Whitley Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Charles Whiting Summa Cum Laude. Taylor Elizabeth Wilkie Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> McKenna Ann Williams. Morgan Thayer Willis. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Wilson, summa cum laude. <laughs> Alana Del Carmen Wilson Mejia. Tanner Avery Wood. Kelsey Marie Worth, cum laude. Cassandra Jalia, magna cum laude. Jolie in absentia. Kara Ann Yanulovich, cum laude. Michael James Zaccone. Isaac S. Zaslow, magna cum laude. Alexander Zaykowski, magna cum laude.
Okay. The classes of 2022. The, let's hear it. The bicentennial year graduating classes. How does that feel? Do you feel old already? Even though you're just getting started on your adult lives? I know that the thought of 200 years of people studying makes me feel old. When I first came here, someone told me that the term consequence was old, old fashioned. And indeed it is an old word from old French consequence and before that from Latin consequentia. It is that which follows from or grows out of any actor course and later also developed the meaning of importance or significance. That same someone said that people these days don't like that old fashioned term and that it was equated with the negative idea of suffering the consequences of their actions in a bad way. But I didn't care. I like the simplicity and directness of the college's mission statement, preparing students to lead lives of consequence. Consequence. Eric Anderson, Alison Wilbur, Chris Beyer, Vladimir Zelensky. This commencement is all about lives of consequence. One of the most pleasant duties I have as president is to guide the process of choosing the honorary degree candidates, and I am particularly pleased with this set of recipients. They represent consequential lives across a wide range of fields, something that the colleges should be celebrated for, our excellence across multiple domains. Eric Anderson represents our strength in artistry, in song, in protest, in going on one's own path through life, even though it took him until now to come back and get an HWS degree. <laughs> Alison Wilbur represents our strength in athletics and community and staying power. I was particularly struck with how last fall, when we were not yet able to do as many social activities, the student body in the Geneva community came out regularly to support the Heron soccer team throughout their season, the Liberty League tournament, and the NCAA playoffs. Alison and her players gave us a bright spot to rally around in a time of darkness. Chris Beyer represents our strength in the sciences, in public health, in advocacy for the underdog. As Chris shared, when he was at Hobart, he worked to raise awareness of LGBTQ plus issues on campus. And when his partner died, Chris doubled down on working to combat AIDS. Vladimir Zelensky. Now, I am not generally a starstruck person, although I do have to admit I have a soft spot for Hugh Jackman. But I was so struck by the pure bravery of President Zelensky's actions on February 24th as Russia launched their invasion of Ukraine and he refused to be evacuated, stood his ground against the invasion and urged others to join him in the fight. And in that moment, he rocketed from being just another politician to being a hero for the ages. Yet he has described his actions humbly. In an address earlier this week to the American Association of Universities in response to a college president stating that Zelensky has been an unbelievable model of courage, President Zelensky said, I don't think of myself of a model of bravery or anything. I think every adequate person in my shoes would do the same. But even more than representing consequence, our honorary degree recipients today represent bravery, including the willingness to engage with life fully to live in the moments that we are given and to share their gifts and their lives with others. This is particularly striking during this time in all of our lives when I think many of us would rather retreat from the world, go under our bed covers, binge watch escapist videos on our phones and computers, and not watch the news or engage in political, environmental, or social actions because the issues that we face right now Violence, racism, sexism, intolerance, inequality, environmental degradation, the continuing pandemic can seem so intractable that we may, we may sink into despairing and then into inertia and apathy. But we all have to fight those tendencies, particularly you who are young and have the time and space in your lives to make a difference. 
President Zelensky, in his address the other day, spoke to you as college students directly, saying, are you an actor or just an observer? Do you try to change anything or not? That is the choice you make every day. Now, I know you all know Latin, because we printed your diplomas in Latin, and I don't think we would have done that if you couldn't read them to make sure we got your information correct on them. And therefore, you probably also all know from your classical education the Latin proverb, fortis fortuna adjuvat, or audentis fortuna uvat. Fortune favors the brave, fortune favors the bold. Or, only if you try can you succeed. So let's all decide to all become a little braver day by day. And then we can be the actor rather than the observer. Be the person of consequence. Now this may seem daunting, but you can start by practicing, along with random acts of kindness, random acts of bravery. Start small. Talk to someone who seems unapproachable. Try out for a local play. Apply for a job that seems like a reach. Ask someone out that you think might say no. Disagree with someone when they say something that you think it's wrong to say. Stand up for someone who's being bullied. Every time you try a little bravery, it gets easier. And then one day, when you really need to be really brave, like when someone you love is very ill, or someone attacks you, or attacks someone you care about, or you need to take an unpopular stance and stand your ground even if you are attacked for it, it will be easier to rise to that occasion with the necessary bravery. I will leave you with one final Latin proverb to send you on your way. Fortuna eruditus favit. Because the other thing about fortune is that fortune favors the prepared mind. We at Hobart and William Smith have helped to prepare you. Now go out there and be brave, fortunate, and consequential. Right now, we are coming to the end of this commencement ceremony, but I want us to recognize that we are not beginning to end, but we are ending the beginning. And so this day, as we thought that we might be leaving with raindrops, I want to tell you the class of 2022, you are glowing. The sun is shining on you. You are taking in the rays and are glowing with infinite opportunities made possible because you stand here in this place today and you walked side by side and you knew that you would not leave each other behind. And I ask blessings upon you at this time because your time here at Hobart and William Smith Colleges has planted seeds that will impact the future of our world because you're going forth to live lives of consequence. And now, may each and every one of you take pleasure in the song that has been gifted to you. May you lift your voices, not because you are asked to sing, but simply because the song present in your souls is waiting to be released. And so I ask blessings upon you. Bless each and every one of you as you carry your song into the world. Bless you with grace to guide you. Bless you with readiness to reconcile the forces that try to tear us apart in this world. Bless you with the capacity for compassion and bless you most of all with a presence of peace, with life, with joy, with purpose and determination and love to lead lives of consequence, go forth into this world. Amen.
We ask that all guests remain seated until the recession of the platform party and until the faculty and graduates have exited the quad. Leading the recession of our newest graduates and representing the alumni and alumni associations, our 50th reuniters, Roger Franco and former chair, board, chair of the Board of Trustees, Maureen collins Zupan, both class of 1972, and Chevy Devaney, class of 1995, parent 2021, and director of alumni and alumni relations. The 197th commencement of Hobart College and the 111th commencement of William Smith College are now closed.